Добрый день, дорогие друзья. Good afternoon. We're about to start our panel discussion, which is called Eating Out, the Evolution of Urban Food Culture. My name is um, Alexandra Sesoyev. I am the founder of the Russian Restaurant Festival, and I am the co-founder of the Russian Wine Awards. So, today our panelists are Daria Lisichenko, founder of the Goret Sad chain, uh, Vladimir Farafona, the head of uh, Vkusville uh, Cooks. Can we please give our speakers a hand? Thank you very much. And uh, Dmitry Stepanov, director of new product development in Yandex. Let me start by saying, in the last five to seven years, maybe even in the last ten years, um, the affection for food in Moscow has expanded uh, tremendously. Back in the day, restaurants were reserved exclusively for well-off people. Uh, they were ex reserved exclusively for special occasions. But today, the majority of uh, people use restaurants as a pure function. It is a place uh, to eat out in order to save time on cooking. People start ordering food deliveries. Um, to enjoy restaurant food at home and uh, people's food preferences are changes. Back in the day, people were happy to eat pizza and burgers, but now everybody is very concerned about their health. So um, people are choosing healthy food and healthy lifestyle. Therefore, my first question is to Daria Lisichenko. She's been on uh, this market for quite some time. So Daria, what do you think? How have people of Moscow changed when it comes to gastronomic preferences? I think that about seven years ago, people People didn't really count calories. They didn't know anything about superfoods, but the ch uh, situation is changing. Can you please tell us a little bit um, about this gastronomic revolution? Well, that would be my pleasure when it comes to the attitude to, to healthy lifestyle and healthy eating. I think that Moscow is a flagship city for the entire planet. I have a first-hand opportunity to see that. In the last uh, 10 years, we did see a cardinal shift. 10 years ago, I founded a company that was uh, making uh, functional living drinks. We talked to people on social media back at the time, but we only saw a very limited interest in this category. People told me that we're not going to have a lot of sales and nobody will be interested in this uh, product, but we continue to persevere. You know, how Healthy eating is uh, probably the fastest growing segment in the world. Uh, the growth in beverages is by 30 to 60 percent each year. I did believe that sooner or later that will be something that will be enjoyed by the majority of people. Can you hear me well? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. And I do believe that the most cardinal shift happened about five years ago, following the 2014 economical crisis, following the anti-Russian sanctions, which actually were quite helpful to a lot of uh, manufacturers. So, so we see that uh, the choice of uh, foodstuffs on the market has uh, changed quite a lot. I think my colleagues from Fkus will, will comment on that. And people really changed their attitudes to nutrition people realize that sometimes it is healthier and cheaper to eat out. On the other hand, maybe it's not really related to sanctions, but we have a lot more information about healthy lifestyle today. I remember when I was running the Moscow Marathon in 2001, it was only about 500 people. Um, today we have about 20,000 runners in the Moscow Marathon. And of course, we have a lot of information about dietary trends, about food composition. Uh, people use fitness apps, people buy gym memberships. So this market just exploded. It is absolutely vital uh, to give people an opportunity to eat healthy um, and to do so affordably and accessibly. I believe that um, 
we are over the greenwashing stage. That was the stage that uh, all you needed to do is uh, to write eco on your product or to draw a green leaf and actually have nothing to back it up in terms of ingredients or the recipes and, that, and people were buying that gladly but today that is absolutely impossible. So back in the day when my team and I founded Gorat Sad, we um, realized that we needed to give the market an absolutely new product. We work in the fast casual uh, segments. You can have a lot of uh, ready-made food to take home with you. We have a huge um, bar that sells kombucha, uh, matcha latte, turmeric latte and so on and so forth. But we put a special emphasis on the quality of ingredients, on the affordability, on our pricing policy and on the ingredients. It's hard to describe um, these uh, dishes, but these are the dishes that uh, we we eat when we go abroad, we eat quinoa, we eat kale salads, but nobody did something like this in Russia. So we decided that that is something that so we need to do in a very simple and honest format. So talking about all of the dishes uh, that uh, you make this, uh, you know, um, do you actually, uh, what do you do in order to ensure the quality of your ingredients? And because we are talking about conscious consumption. What is the share of local products um, in uh, your dishes? And you probably know that quinoa was um, the dish that uh, was eaten by poor people in Latin America, but because it's uh, become uh, so popular in affluent countries, now people in Latin America are actually starving. Well, you can say the same thing about buckwheat. You know, buckwheat is something that uh, costs almost nothing in Russia, but uh, in the United States it's extremely exotic, it costs a lot of money, but luckily no Russian person is starving because they sell it for a lot of money in the United States. But I believe that there are two global trends. The first trend is um, a very cosmopolitan one. Because of the social media, people hear about a lot of things and people can follow all of the global trends. And of course, so when it comes to groceries, they can be delivered to any point of the world. On the other hand, um, there is also a locavore trend, a trend to eat uh, something that uh, was manufactured locally and uh, that's been uh, eaten historically. Do you have a huge share of local products? Well, you know, I never actually um, did an estimate, but I would say for our chain it's 50-50. You cannot really eat, eat healthy with without imported products such as quinoa. Quinoa is quite unique, uh, quite a unique grain. When it comes to uh, composition, it has a very high share of proteins, but such things as um, chlorella, um, something that uh, we learned how to grow in Russia, in uh, covered pools uh, with a very low risk of contamination. What about chlorella that is being made in Russia? Is that a local product? And, of course, we also have things that are very dear to us. We work with groceries that are manufactured in Russia, with foodstuffs that are made here. We are looking for suppliers who do not only supply environmentally friendly, but also organic products. That is a separate uh, challenge in itself. So we are constantly looking for supplies like this. But together with this, because ha we have a very special dishes. We follow interesting recipes. We always look at not only where the ingredients were made, but we minimize things like ready-to-eat sauces. We have Viennese soya mayonnaise, which we tried in a number of locations, and we see that it doesn't actually have any sort of added, um, additives, any sort of thickeners. The same thing is true about oils. Not all oils are equally nutritious, and of course, uh, you know, in uh, cooking, usually 
regular just plant-based oil is uh, based but we cannot afford for instance ghee or we cannot afford to use olive oil or coconut oil in all of our recipes and so on and so forth so sugar for instance we always monitor the sugar content in our dishes even when it comes uh, to, to sugars that are inherent to certain foods such as fruit or fruit puree we also look at gluten we also monitor products for gluten to make sure that they're gluten-free. So all our products are sugar-free, gluten-free. 80% of our dishes are, of course, plant-based. We do not call them vegan, but we want people to basically find foods that they like and to find food that they can eat throughout the whole day. And we believe that healthy eating should be mostly plant-based and protein should come uh, from natural sources such as fish uh, or meat. Of course, we're also looking for some uh, local uh, fish and we also manufacture products that are in demand such as almond milk, uh, such as um, short uh, shell. It, it has a very uh, short shell life, sometimes it's um, uh, almonds, dates uh, and uh, water, sometimes we um, add uh, turmeric there or matcha and uh, we also manufacture coconut yogurt, we manufactured it a month, we launched it a month ago, so um, our consumers were really insisting on us uh, starting uh, to make coconut yogurt, we use uh, vegan starter culture, this is a very honest, a very <laughs> natural product so we have a certain mix so we're always looking for something that we can do better and um, let me tell you more this year we're not only going to look for basic things such as no sugar no gluten but right now we are also riding the wave of this new trend so, uh, such as autoimmune um, eating protocol what does it mean is that uh, people who follow this diet so they do not eat certain ingredients so people who find out that sometimes they need to, uh, to switch to this autoimmune diet in order to restore their gut function, well, the number of these people is on the rise. So we decided that when it comes to our daily section, it will look like a diagram. And so 10% of all of the dishes that we offer should be uh, autoimmune. So we have keto diet, paleo diet, uh, vegan diet, raw diet diets and uh, fitness products uh, which have a high content of protein. Our question to Vladimir from Vkusville company. Five years ago, Echo was associated with the farmer's product. Today we understand that it's not always about that. You know, Vkusville company, which is growing at extravagant pace, outpacing most storm stork, so, and every place has Every location has Vkusville store. The question is whether all your products are produced by farmers and whether it is a marketing promotion thing or whether you are responsible for farmers, you control the production. And this whole diversity for all the products from tiny to big farmers. Good afternoon to everyone. The question is the following. When we started to work, those were small, tiny farmers, two, three people. Since many suppliers have been working with us starting 2009, 2010, we cannot call them farmers since they produce their products to two outlets of Isbanka. Now there is a huge number of outlets. So they have grown as well. So every product supply to our warehouse is checked. It is checked when we are looking for suppliers. When we find a new suppliers, it goes through a whole verification stage. With every supply, we have our own lab at the warehouse, which checks the goods on a daily basis. So under this check, and uh, you're talking about the Russian standards, or of course the company has its own specific standards, uh, specific things which you pay attention to unlike other retail chains. We follow the Russian standards and it is it is the case 
talking about specific things, I'm not specialist in, in this field. But every supply is checked and is inspected on a daily basis. And there is one article of product. If something is wrong, so we select 20 other. If something is wrong with any, so all the products are returned and sent back to the supplier. So there is no marketing component. It is how it works. The question concerning the evolution of consumption of a Moscovite. So it's clear that talking about the high-end consumers, that was the seventh continent, then Asbuka of Kusa, and people diversified their consumption, economizing on time. They are ready to go to walking rich distance outlet, Kusville, for example, close to my house. Why there is a demand for ready-to-use dishes? Why? Don't you continue expansion, position yourself as a farmer's store within the walking reach? Of course, we're not ready to stop this expansion as a store within the walking, farmer's store with a walking reach. So the area of company development is changing. So we don't want to be associated only with this image. Now we're developing delivery of the products from the store, uh, food tech, three areas, DAP store, so on and so forth. It is mostly connected with the fact that people don't have time. They don't want to spend time on shopping, on preparing food, up to 1.5 hours per day. We're helping people to economize our their own time and to have a good balanced diet to their needs. What do you imply by saying food tech? We have a special department of Kusville. This is food tech department, which is going to include, right now we have special balanced diets, rations. We're going to have a special department responsible for preparing food by the recipe books and just healthy, tasty food, but not for any purposes, just daily diet. Something look like our ready to use food. Do you have this kind of data? I know that of course it was Asbuka, a very strong as a CRM system flowing all your consumers by. Have you compared the clients, have you matched the clients who bought ingredients like cheese, kefir, and those who ask for ready food, cooked food. Is this a new group of people? No, not exactly. Mostly our consumers of, of course, who is preparing food, those who buy ready food. Those who are ready who are used to ready food, so they're using these services. Have you looked at the average age and the average bill, average check? So who are these people? The major age group is from 25 to 35, and the average check amounts to nine to 10,000 per month. Nine to 10,000 per month. Dmitry, the question to you as a person the company responsible for technologies, Dark Kitchen, Yandex, Yeda, Yandex Food. I know that Yandex is developing its own Dark Kitchen. Dark Kitchen. This is the restaurant without the kitchen, without the cook. You cannot order as a guest in the restaurant, but you can order it to your house. It's difficult to say what we're not developing, actually. This is one of the ways. Three weeks ago, we started to develop our own stores. The first store was opened in Hamovniki region, Hamovniki district. So this is, it has the headquarters of Yandex. And first of all, we test our products using our own stuff. This is a buzzword. 
I'm not a fan of food tech, but I'm actually using it though, since it's not quite clear where the border is. If you use one as, are you in food tech or not? Instagram, probably you're in food tech. Maybe tech is food. IT company or technology stems back from our life. We're not saying that I'm going to have use electrical teapot. I believe this tech word is going to leave our life because it will be used by default. One of the most famous formats is the delivery from the restaurant. The second format, which is not that well known, this is when we deliver once per week several meals, breakfasts or dinners, Yandex Chef with the pro components of food components with recipes in the third format, which we have started to develop as well, is dark store, the store which you cannot attend, which comes to your house within 10 minutes. Average time delivery is about 10 minutes. And it's more than 1,000 items for delivery. Do you understand this is this marketplace, but not your own storage? We don't have our own headcount for livestock, but I wouldn't say that we're not going to do that. We're public company. I cannot say such things. No, we're not planning to enter agriculture. There is a joke, you know, you can always say that there was a joke. Is it the marketplace? This is a store. The, can Darya Vladimir be present in your dark store? Let's discuss that. We have Domic in country house in the country, the house in the country, Coca Cola, Plumbeer and other trademarks. Even some fresh products. Moreover, we have a lot of services somehow connected with food. The most mass one is the Yandex Search, one million times per month, gives answers on food. We're quite aware what people eat, what they like, what they prepare, what they order. We have a big service in our ecosystem, which is called Food Deal, Yeta Deal, which has 350,000 promos, discounts, about 10 million users. I've always been interested in the mindset of people, people who use this Yeta Deal, which is buckwheat searching for buckwheat in Pitorich. can be the premium Yandex users, people who use Yeda deal application, some of them scan of the cars, but, but we see those checks. Maybe they want to have some cash back. How can you see them? Yeda deal works in the phone when you get cash back on the scanned check. If there are some goods, producers or vendors want to pay this cash back. This is a way to move online to offline and pay for real sales, but not for being present on the shelf. This is a big service, one of the biggest cashback services in Russia. You know, I have some other things. This summer we have announced, we did it at our annual conference in May, cloud restaurants, we are preparing half ready food, which can be easily prepared. And then these food products turned into ready food. They can do that within five to 10 minutes in our partner restaurants in Yandex Yeda. which we have, and we are launching this project this summer. I have 
a question about the delivery services. And on Dark Kitchen as well. There are a lot of people as investment project think about their own service for delivery. There is a good example of uh, Rocket Bank guys, the local kitchen, your local kitchen. And Yandex Yeda, or delivery club, is uh, going to say, is it a saturated market or there is some room for other players? Figure number one, the correlation between food preparation and home products compared with other countries. In Russia, one to ten to one, of one Every ready, every restaurant, food, fast food has 10 to 40 preparations at home. For example, in the US, this is 1 to 1.5. In some European countries, this public food is even bigger than the homemade food. So, home ready, ready products are going to grow up and this is the colleagues are going to maybe add up and maybe agree I hope for the last one that ready food is developing very really rapidly so it's not a question about time how to real guard this time there are always things more interesting than preparing home at home just to watch TV show, for instance, spend time with kids, read a book, different interests, actually. Yes, ready food is going to grow. Delivery of this food is going to skyrocket. But the question is about the categories. If you take a look at a seven company many years ago had a commercial daily flights from Moscow to Russia and back. You know, we're living in the world of canoa, gluten-free bread, lactose-free milk, 90% of the Russian population spends about 700 rubles per day. And this is the reason why fast food and the restaurant market has about 60% of the market versus 40 in the United States. Why? It's not because people like just fast sugar and fast nutrients. It makes them happy, improve their mental activity. Just because it is the only ready food affordable to everyone. And we do believe and we take some steps with cloud restaurants, which can be in line with that amount, 700 rubles, that we need to give some people just beyond their favorite. I really do respect fast food uh, companies beyond. You cannot eat only burgers and people do not eat only burgers. People want to have kind of diversity. They, apart from borscht, salanka, potato with meat, everyone used to eat in the childhood. So many people want to eat good food, which is healthy, and wants to spend not 10 hours per week, at least 8. This is 2 hours plus to your life. Is there any shift in the paradigm? as people have started to s search for bowl, bulky dishes, which are considered even healthier food compared with this fat food. Yandex company is one of those IT service companies. And the difference is that the company uh, shouldn't give average 
understand. Mostly people are healthy. If you uh, take everybody's temperature, it's going to be 36.6. But what we see is that the people need different things. Some people are looking for gluten-free bread. Someone is not satisfied with muzzles for the restaurants once per week, but he wants to have muzzles which were delivered in the morning. Someone wants to have food and not to spend time in front of the cooker. People are different. I haven't created a wheel again, so the level of living standard is not that, that 60 percent of the population will start looking for Pocky. The situation, unfortunately, is different. But being Yandex company can have a joint project, kind of national health, and to fund orders to reduce prices for healthy food, to increase prices for pizzas and burgers. We are a commercial business. So from the perspective so our main, main objective is to answer the requirements of our consumers. We do not force them to do anything. This is our initial DNA. So the people who want to eat burgers, we offer them burgers. People who want to have canoa, we offer them canoa. And uh, we do not promote anything. We do not force people into something. This is not our role. We just a service company. If you want us to deliver from A to B destination, then we are going to do that. So we shouldn't decide instead of you. Daria, the question is about the rise in the number of checks per one outlet which you had to understand whether the problem of healthy food is the problem of the garden ring and in textile she can nobody cared about healthy food at all people have different problems maybe they don't want to do that but they have other problems this is not the mindset you know the golden the garden ring road is not a very vivid example over the last year like for like on the turnover of our retail tones plus 20 percent and i believe that it happened thanks to our work and new projects which we developed new menu which we change on a monthly basis we're trying to offer something new to our guests so we are always trying to expand our offer, we are trying to expand our consumer base and you know the interest in healthy eating is um, growing and uh, I don't even think that healthy eating is a trend anymore, I think it is becoming the norm. Dmitry is right, the economic factor does play a role and quite an important role. So the percentage of people who buy in your deli it seems that your daily food is quite affordable. Yes, it is affordable. And uh, I think that somebody wrote to Masha Labano saying that uh, Gorazad is very expensive. Why would you buy lemons from them? What? And I said, 69 rubles. Is it uh, really something that you would call unaffordable? And I think that uh, it's just uh, people's perception. People perceive healthy food as very expensive, but I think it is very relative what is expensive and for whom. We do have a benchmark, and our benchmark is Moscow. Unfortunately, we're mostly located in the central part of Moscow. It is hard for me to judge because our chain is um, not so large, but I do think that um, and uh, overall amount that uh, people spend in our daily is 400 or 450 rubles. Maybe it's uh, not uh, so cheap compared to fast food, but uh, I do think that our consumers are, well, they can afford it, I guess. And I just wanted to, to comment a little bit about 
educating consumers how can businesses educate or influence the consumers and I do understand my colleagues um, that's a business is business so we probably shouldn't uh, become mentors or it shouldn't be our primary targets but I do think that a business always influences consumption and consumers it's not just the consumers who steer businesses but also businesses as steer consumers so we do have an educational uh, project and i think all of the large pro uh, companies have educational projects ikea has launched an educational project on environmentally conscious consumption so we also organize public lectures uh, to answer people's questions about nutrition, healthy eating, and this is absolutely free for our public. We can have uh, a mom of an autistic child who talks to our audience about how she improved the condition of her child through nutrition and we answer all sorts of questions we get from our audience and of course we are giving people uh, quality food but we're also giving them information people seek out um, information well you know to be honest I do monitor the growth of your chain so I think that 20% uh, of your growth is probably due to your marketing strategies and they're due to your personal success as a businesswoman but that's probably not such an impressive figure if we're talking about healthy eating we're talking about the healthy eating trend and uh, if it was such an upward trend then you would probably have 200% uh, of growth well we're talking about a sales volume of um, our retail outlet so that is um, a brick and mortar and it's um, located in a certain area so we cannot uh, really increase the traffic so much if we look at it not just in terms of like for like but uh, if you use other indicators uh, then uh, the growth figures would probably be uh, different i believe that marketing alone will not give us a lot of growth it cannot actually give us long-term results what's important is the quality of product um, that uh, is being sold and of course the quality of service also of course how you present your product to consumers how you inform uh, um, consumers about your choice uh, well we um, also have like fruit leather made uh, out of green bananas so that is absolutely fantastic we didn't really think that it would sell and i was um, was also um, telling our consumers look at this look at our suppliers they're so innovative they come up with absolutely terrific ideas in this uh, green banana fruit leather they use uh, gluten-free flour so it's a bit harder than uh, to sell, you know, something that people are used to. And of course, when we talk about meat patties, people love meat patties, but in our meat patties, we do not use uh, cheap um, white bread, but it doesn't mean that traditional meat patties are not healthy when we talk about um, the boiled vegetable salad. Again, that it is not necessarily unhealthy so we do give our people and our consumers an opportunity to eat something that they're familiar with but we pay special attention to ingredients Dmitry but when it comes to your typical order well what do you think people prefer fast food or dishes they can understand easily what do you think in Yandex food well we see it in um, in terms of Yandex food, we'd see what people are searching for. There are a lot of different uh, consumers. There are people who order deliveries on Yandex food, and there are also people who love trying something new. These are the people who are basically hunting after all of the new trends, and they will never rest until they give everything a try. There are people who are not afraid of new brands, and there are people who are not afraid of new re recipes or of new dishes. So some people are ultra conservative when it comes to food. Let's say somebody loves sushi, but they just love one type of sushi and they never try any other sushi. We also have a large uh, consumer base, um, people who enjoy fast food. 
and these people do not really venture out to try something other than fast food. Sometimes they cannot afford it. And that is something that is also proven by the surveys conducted by the Russian statistical agency, Rostad. So we're talking about very different consumers, but say, um, Yandex Food. Last year, Yandex Food um, grew by the factor of 10. It grew by a thousand percent, and um, we view Yandex Food as a retail company. It's retail, just a new format of um, retail. We have brick and mortar stores, and uh, now we have online stores. And uh, the most popular thing in Russia in terms of retail are food courts. So restaurants and shops are competing with each other and everybody, of course, is advocating something different. Some people are advocating poke, some people are advocating healthy lifestyles and they all cater to different consumers. We are creating a chain at the current moment and just like it happens with all of our businesses, all the businesses grow through a um, stage when you develop the infrastructure like with Yandex Taxi. When it comes to your consumers and um, how really how picky are your consumers? How spoiled are they? You, usually in Europe, people are quite shocked to find out how progressive Russian banks are. Well, I do have an account which is registered in the Russian uh, tax authority, an account in Bank of America. So I can tell you that uh, all of our banks are way more advanced than the Bank of America. So if you remember seven years ago, a taxi took 30 minutes. Uh, uh, to come and uh, pick up a passenger and so nowadays if it takes more than five minutes people start feeling frustration so, um, the same thing is happening with food if a restaurant closes at 10 p.m. It creates a lot of unhappy people because some people leave work at 10 p.m. So when it comes to Moscow, I see that there are a lot of uh, frustrated people who are frustrated um, about the delivery times. You know, half an hour is actually quite fast in the, for the world, you know. We are one of the leaders when it comes to the um, delivery speed. The uh, median delivery time for our company is 30 minutes. People get used uh, to the good things in life quite quickly, almost instantaneously. Maybe you shouldn't spoil your consumers. Okay, we will not. I'm sorry, I just uh, didn't understand what you were driving at. Um, no, I'm just trying to understand whether Russian consumers are super spoiled. You know, no, Russian consumers are not really different from consumers all over the world, then why um, do you deliver your food in half an hour as opposed to one hour uh, like other deliverers? Well, this is just competition. And Yandex Food is growing very fast, outperforming all of the competitors globally. So you work in 17 countries. Yeah, we uh, recently we just launched in Ghana and uh, Romania. I do congratulate you on Ghana. That's very exotic. We are a public company, so I cannot really tell you about our plans. Well, as an employee. Uh, are you interested in international projects? So we already have international projects in Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire and in Romania. This is our uh, Yandex Taxi service. And just like any other business, we want uh, to grow exponentially. Our exponential growth is uh, becoming harder and harder in Russia. When we talk about um, the sectors where such growth is possible, well, they're becoming fewer and fewer of them. Uh, you know, just like the press secretary of Yandex, Mr. Grabowski, <laughs> you're talking in very general terms. It's like uh, you're asking me these general questions. Do you like to eat? I love to eat. Do you want to grow? Of course we want to grow, but uh, are there any companies who, no, which do not want to grow? <laughs> Vladimir.
I would like to ask you about expansion to other cities. Of course, I understand that uh, this concept farm to table is a great idea for Moscow. But uh, what do people think about um, your service in St. Petersburg? I think in St. Petersburg, Azabok of Kusa has overtaken you in, uh, in terms of um, the size of the basket. So what about your performance in other cities of Russia? Well, the performance figures um, are, of course, different in each city, but uh, people are clamoring for Vkusville to open uh, uh, stores in their city. We received this request uh, from people on social media. We started opening our stores outside of Moscow a bit over a year ago. So the first store in St. Petersburg opened in last May. Currently, we have stores in about 20 cities of Russia. The furthest city from Moscow, where we opened is Kazan, but we are still transporting a lot of our products to Kazan. So we do have uh, certain constraints when it comes to opening in other cities, but people want us to come to their cities. Again, due to the economic situation outside of Moscow, we have fewer potential consumers, but uh, we're still performing quite well. When it comes uh, to Moscow, do you think that Moscow is truly ahead of the rest of Russia when it comes to the consumption of your products? And I would also um, uh, like to ask Dmitry about the delivery times in Moscow and in other cities. When uh, we're uh, talking about uh, the items per ticket in Moscow and in other cities, uh, what is the difference? Oh, you know, I don't know this information. What about you? What about Yandex Food? Well, we work in about um, 20 plus cities in Russia. We just launched our food delivery service in some of these cities uh, very recently. So we do not really have a lot of data for comparison. But when it comes uh, to uh, food delivery, so we see a trend for growth. People are becoming more affluent, but of course, um, every delivery service has a cost price and it is um, quite high, and that is something that is borne by our consumers. And unfortunately, unfortunately, I have to say that not uh, every person in Russia can afford food delivery. But if we're talking about uh, saving time on food delivery, what about services like chef markets, which bring the ingredients to you, ingredients that you use um, to cook a certain dish? What do you think it is? Is it just uh, the users being a little bit um, spoiled wanting to cook themselves. Well, I cannot really tell you a lot about uh, chef market. Um, this service has been launched by a colleague. But it's not just a whim to cook at home. Uh, there are only a few people uh, who use just one type of nutrition. Of course, people like that exist. Uh, people who go to discount stores or even uh, super discount stores, these are people uh, who cannot really afford more. But if we talk about the rest of our consumer base, then again, we have a lot of variety. Our consumers, they choose different different uh, styles of eating. You know, there are people who can even go to the La Marais restaurant every day, and I've seen these people. They're not a myth. But uh, there are people who go to Vkusville, there are people who shop at Azbak of Kus, uh, and there are people, God forbid, who go to Pituruchka. Or uh, people use uh, savings apps, such as uh, Yedadil. So they just scan barcodes um, for coupons. Again, let me say that uh, we have very, very different uh, clients. We also have a number of affluent clients who truly adore McDonald's. So, Vkusville and Gorod Sad closely monitor their suppliers and they guarantee that all the products they sell are quality products 
but let's say I open up a cafe, I can join Yandex Food, and I can deliver whatever I want to your clients. Is that the situation? Well, you will. You know the restaurant markets. You know how expensive it is to open a restaurant. Let's say somebody opens a restaurant, and in about a week later, you get a notification that, um, let's say, a health inspection is arriving. So you have to put a sign, please wash your hands next to the sink so that uh, all of your waiters can see that. And uh, the restaurant remains open, uh, let's say, in the United States of America, but in Russia that is not the case. Our government is extremely diligent when it comes uh, to um, safety and food safety and hygiene, but we also believe in the invisible hand of the market. So if uh, people don't enjoy a certain food, they're not going to order the delivery. And we also think that when it comes uh, to food delivery, people trust well-known brands. There are a few of people who um, there are few people who experiment with different things. Let's say if you come to a brick and mortar restaurant, then of course you can look at um, the place, how it looks, whether you see, like how the food looks. When uh, you're ordering deliveries online, um, you don't have an opportunity to <laughs> run the reconnaissance on the place. Uh, therefore, when it comes to online food orders, people prefer to order something that uh, they already know. So therefore, we do not give everybody an opportunity to deliver their food to our clients. We use um, a metric to sort so or uh, sieve out our surprise. Do we have any questions from the audience? I would like um, to ask Dmitry a question. When it comes to Yandex Dark Store, how do you choose brands and the products that you sell there? Oh, what do you use? Uh, metrics, uh, statistical information? How do you make this decision that you'll sell something in the Index Dark Store? We just look at the most popular products. Most popular products, um, most popular wear. Well, we do have a very complicated uh, system of uh, statistical information. We know which stores are present in a certain location. We know what. Uh, kind of products and how many products uh, they sell, so we choose the most uh, popular dishes. But this is a bit of an experimental project, so basically you just do it manually. Is that so you're saying? Well, we do have a certain amount of data. Let's say, according to our internal criteria as we have got used to in our measurement system this is called manual approach but what we call manual approach might be called big data in other places that's would be my answer there is a question from the audience Good afternoon, I have a question on our today's topic from the developers community. As five years ago, residential areas and blocks, business centers were designed considering the idea of consult guys so but the trends are changing so I'd like to ask you a question about the future trends a couple of them how do you see retail trends restaurant business in the format of residential areas and business centers with this technological advance and the platforms used by everyone how do you foresee what should we design in our projects. 
May I answer the question? Just not long ago, I participated individually in the project of Zahi Hadid Bureau, which won the tender to construct a big building. And they applied to me, to Yandex particularly, and the advice or the recipe which I shaped for them was quite trivial. You cannot imagine the future. Then a big number of people would buy Apple shares on the day when our first iPhone was launched or a year prior to that, they could have foreseen this situation and they, they wouldn't do anything, just uh, enjoying the returns on the shares. But it is not the case. In Yandex, we don't like such a word as a strategy. We are not engaging in strategic planning. Our way forward is uh, to be maximum adjustable and adaptive and the biggest amount of cheap experiments. We do not like to make decisions. We have Yandex search engine, our biggest product. Last year we had 5,000 experiments. Everybody here participated in several, not even understanding several experiments in every service. You are not aware of that. Different ranging, different design, different pricing, different ways to get your car to your destination. Let's try to answer your question. I would recommend you to do the following. Plan the space to be adjustable, to have short contracts with companies trading in food. There is a vivid example of food markets, and the most vivid example is the depot. Depot has a general supply, which gives the economic feasibility to the project. Along with that, if tomorrow we're going to see Hawaiian cuisine in top so there is not a problem to dedicate a third part of the share of the market to this Hawaiian cuisine. The maximum flexibility is what, from my perspective, should be provided by the developers. Thank you very much. Have I answered your question? I would add to this... We are talking about big residential blocks which can be regarded as a micro city. So the task of the developer is to implement your project within three, four years. So the forecast is quite simple. So a number of developers ask us whether we are ready to enter this or that residential block of flats, but the presence of high quality retail sector, food retail sector, or kitchen increases the price of the site when there is no infrastructure in place. I believe that this is of utmost importance. I've seen the board about ABC analysis on different retail chains, and restaurants, and stores. They were allocated uh, differentiated ABC categories depending on the average check. So developers planning their site should understand what kind of pricing strategy they should make use of and whether they are going to be required by the people. This is about Fkusville strategy. So within the next three years, Fkusville will be welcomed by all the Moscovites. In order to avoid these uh, mismatches, 
I had an example of a girl who came up to me and said that she wanted to buy a franchise. She used to live four years ago in Vorobyovi mountains, and you, and you, very expensive residential block. It was Pityorichka, or Pirikrosta, nobody attended that. Nobody was satisfied with that quality of the products. I would do this thing. May I talk about the possibility for forecasts? Four years ago, of course, the scale, current scale was difficult to forecast. Bering Vostok, they managed to do that, but there were not many of them. This one example. Yandex Yeda, who could have guessed, even within Yandex four years ago, that we would even be engaged in this area, and it would be such big, and the pace would be such huge. If any amount of people in the market could see that, so food fox guys would be easier to raise money for new rounds. But that was very difficult. And the third example from my life, guys from Magnet, one of the managers, one year and a half, I invest as a business angel myself, came up to me with the project of Samakat, it's dark store, around couriers, fast delivery, 10 minutes delivery. And I thought to invest using my own money, and it seemed to me it was quite not long ago, a year and a half. I just spoke with my colleagues, I needed to have a mandate, and said, of course, we were not going to do that. So uh, are we going to have stories? So I decided not to do that for some reason. It's not important why, but one year and a half has passed, and we are doing it within Yandex company. How could you have guessed this four years ago? Whom should you be? Should you be a crystal ball to predict things like that? Are there any other questions? Ladies first. I have a question to Dmitry about Yandex Yeda. Specific food market, so delivery within 30 minutes for European looks unexpected. As people are working effectively. So, how? Can you differentiate between the average time of delivery in Moscow and other Russian cities, considering the specifics of the market? The same, the same. So the gentleman, the backbench, who a question in terms of development. We have a special workshop with four tons per day production rate. So we have opened several stores. We, it worked not quite well when before we opened this window shop near the production facilities, 500 square meters, and the restaurant. So the revenue went up fivefold on the ground. And now Agro Padvoria project in New Moscow, we're going to do a bigger scale of this meat processing center. We're going to have different guys. If you have seen examples like that, so we are interested in that. How can we find partners? Is going to be successful? Let's ask Daria because she has some experience. If I understand right, your question whether it is going to be required by potential tenants, right? The speaker is not using the mic, the interpretation is not possible. The speaker keeps on not using the mic. So 
on 20,000 square meters, you want to have a production facility with this. Haven't heard of projects like that, if it may be implemented. But something similar is happening in fashion. When local producers of clothes get together and search for a place where you can tailor small amounts of clothes and sell them on the ground. There is a new program of designer technological parks. Why such an opportunity is going to be provided? Maybe there are some producers, local producers, which might make use of this area and the possibility to sell. But such a facility should be promoted in order to provide for the demand for this product. This is a project close to Fort Court in terms of the strategy and marketing. That's what be my my approach. In the understand the format right, something similar is being developed by Kalanik, one of the founders of major founder of Uber, living Uber. He started to do something similar. The areas in not very expensive in terms of the rental payment spots, the United Supply Chain, restaurants of prepared food for delivery, this assistance in branding and rebranding, some kind of a package which is rendered to food enthusiasts or entrepreneur or the retail chain which wants to expand its production of so-called food co-working. We know that such examples can be found globally. Partially the question is about development under the culture of food. How do you foresee the development of Asian food consumption type? It's a, which has a diversity of prepared food and there's a spot where people buy prepared food and don't prepare food at home at all. This is the first question. The second question is to Dmitry. So according to your internal metrics, what is the competition level between the services Yandex Chef and Yandex Yeda? And the question to Vladimir is how do you assess the prospects of your own social projects when special shelf with food from Fukushima to the business center with free access and at the end of the month you just see the indicators and you deliver this shelf again. So let me ask you the first question. What is the difference between Russia and other European countries in Thailand? The cuisine you know, the kitchen on flat is a very important thing. When you rent or buy a flat, if it is less than 8 to 10 meters, it's a very small. So the cult of food and preparing food at home, we need to wait two, three generations to pass for them to be maximum open to restaurants and cafes. If you remember the kitchen in Thailand, it might not be even within the house area when we're going to have two, three meters like in Paris, or when it is going to be no kitchen at all, that's going to be a race. This is a long way for people to have food inside the house or outside the house. As any capital of the world, it is growing. Lots and lots of New York is going to take kind of share. And this is one interesting explanation. Nobody thinks about that. This is mostly connected with uh, Russia, that Russia is a big country of agro-industrial industry and only big players can get good prices as a big retail or fast food. That's why any small restaurants are forced to upper middle class premium special occasions, events as the purchase price 40% higher than 
the parish price of a magnet, and that's it. So the culture gen regenerates economics, economics regenerates culture. This is a vicious circle, but the, it's going to change when we're going to have affordable proposal as prepared food and with comparable price. This long and sophisticated technology. The question was about micro markets. The whole company is about trust. As you can pay by using cards. If people forget cards, they put a sticker 20, 200 rubles, or they say that, that we will bring it tomorrow and then just go use this receipt to pay for that product. We do like this format. It is to be developed and probably as a Kinja project. As Amazon store format with CCTV and with cards. Dear guests, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your questions. We are ready to say farewell. Thank you.